Welcome back YouTube Pipe Smokers, Mutton Chop Piper here. Well today's video is entitled, The Fine Art of Tamping. Now before we get started I wanted to inform you that I'm a little bit under the weather. I've got a head cold or, and it's gone to my chest. And I'm sick, but not because of pipe smoking. So if you're a lurker out there and this is the first video of mine you've watched, uh, please don't leave me a comment saying, oh, you're a pipe smoker. Well, that explains the cough. Here where I live, the temperature has fluctuated. Uh, usually it's 70 in the mornings. Here the last few days, it's been 50s in the mornings. So when it goes from summer to fall, like a lot of you out there, I get sick. So, But it's a natural sick. It's not a sickness brought on by pipe smoking. All right, so let's get on with the video. The reason why I wanted to do this video is because um, I myself go and watch other people's videos and I go online and I go to different forums and just check out what's being said. And one of the things that I noticed watching the videos is it, it seems like uh, a lot of uh, YouTube pipe community uh, video people uh, are having trouble uh, tamping their tobacco um, or in my opinion they're not doing it correctly so for you new pipe smokers out there or you you intermediate pipe smokers I was concerned that you would go and watch these videos and say oh well that's the way you tamp oh, I've been doing it wrong I guess that's the way I'm supposed to do it so I wanted to do this video so that you would understand exactly why we tamp and the proper way to do it. <clears throat> now before we get into all that, I want to try to explain to you how tobacco burns in a tobacco pipe. Now I've done, I've done this portion in other videos, but I wanted a solid foundation to build up to what, what I wanted to talk to you about. Okay, so I'm going to liken smoking a pipe to a fire in a fireplace. Okay, so as you know, in a fireplace, you have kindling that goes at the bottom, and then you have a grate, and then on top of that, you have your wood. Now, fire needs three things to burn. It needs oxygen, it needs some type of fuel, could be gasoline, could be wood, could be tobacco, and it needs an ignition source. What I mean by ignition source is a match, a lighter, lightning, something to start the show going. So, you have in a fireplace, you have the kindling, kindling at the bottom, and you have oxygen that's swirling around it, and you use a uh, match to light the kindling. The kindling lights up and it starts the fuel burning in the form of wood. Eventually, the pieces of wood that are burnt fall to the bottom. So after about an hour or so, you've got a nice bed of embers, a nice ember bed that feeds fire to your fuel. So let's take this fireplace and let's turn it over. And that's how a pipe, a tobacco pipe, burns. Okay, so here we have the tobacco pipe. You pack it with, uh, with tobacco here. You do your char light, and then you start smoking. Once the char light is there, the char is there to guide the ember in the right direction, going down. So... If you have your embers here, then it's naturally going to travel this way because that's where the fresh um, tobacco is. Now, when you when you pack your pipe, you do some of you do the three pinch method, some of you do the fold and stuff. It doesn't matter which way you you pack your pipe. Let's use the three pinch method. You pinch. You tamp it down, pinch again, tamp it down, pinch it for a third time, tamp it down and make sure it springs back. 
Now, we've always told you to lightly tamp it down. The reason why that is is because you want to make sure that you have oxygen mingled in with the tobacco. So that way when you put the ignition source to it, the oxygen and the tobacco in combination will start to burn. So you've gone through all that, all that work, and you have started to smoke your pipe. <clears throat> now you've noticed that you're getting some ash. Now let me explain to you this way. Okay, so my bottom hand is the tobacco. My top hand is the ash. So as the ember burns the tobacco, it separates. The ash grows and your fuel, which is the tobacco, starts to become smaller and smaller. Well, the ember will continue to burn as long as you have that ash um, ash on top of it and it has a direction to go which is down for the with the tobacco if that amount of ash gets too tall or gets too much then there's too much oxygen and not enough fuel and that ember will go out so the goal is is to keep this ash bed as close to the unburnt tobacco as you can so the ember will continue to burn. So, here is a pipe that I have started. As you can see, <coughs> I've got an ash bed at the top. So, I, let, I smoked this pipe until it almost went out. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to light it. So, here we go. It won't light. The reason why it won't light is because the ash bed is this thick. Your tobacco is here, so it can't, the fire, the ignition source cannot go through that ash to get to the tobacco. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you press down on the ash against the unburdened tobacco. Now, the only thing, the only problem is, is let me get another pipe real quick problem that I see is this. You have taken all that time to make sure that your tobacco is properly, that you have loaded your tobacco properly. After you get so much ash and you're ready to tamp for the first time, this is what I see. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> okay. I tamped it down. Or they're tamping like this. Really hard. What that does is it compacts the tobacco to the point where no oxygen can mingle with the tobacco and you will light it about a thousand times and it'll stay lit for three or four seconds because there's no oxygen to help feed the fire. So that's what I was concerned with. If you knew pipe smokers would think, oh yeah, so I'll take my pipe and I just, oh, just, I just jam it down there. Yeah, okay, that's, I, that's good. No. No, no, no. Let me put this, put this back. All right, so for you new pipe smokers, I'm using what's called a check tool. You can use your own tamper, but until you kind of learn how to properly tamp your ash down on your tobacco, if you've got a check tool or whatever tool, I want you to use your thumb and your forefinger. Now, as you can see, I'm ready to tamp. Okay, so what I want you to do is I just want you to take the, the tamper and I want you to let the tamp, the weight of the tamper the weight of the tamper tamp the tobacco down. Okay, there you go. Now the tobacco is tamped down onto the bed of the unburnt tobacco. <coughs> so, let's see how it does this time. There you go. Okay. 
There you go. Now, the reason why you want to lightly push that bed of ash down is so that you don't compact the remaining tobacco and deprive it of oxygen. Uh, once you do that, you're pretty much done. You're going to have to get all the tobacco and all the, the rest of the tobacco and the ash out and start all over. So, again, the way I want you to do it is I want you to take your forefinger and your thumb and just let the weight of the tamper tamp the ash down on top of, of the unburnt tobacco. Once you get the idea, once you get the rhythm, once you figure out what you're supposed to do, then tamp it any way you want. But until you kind of learn what you're doing, use this method. I promise you, you won't go wrong, won't go wrong with it. All right, well, that's it for today. That's it for this video. I hope you learned something. And I want to wish you and your family happy piping.